So treatment of uh, anxiety, uh, certainly uh, quite a lot of uh, anxiety can be treated behaviorally. Uh, many of the obsessive compulsive disorders uh, can be treated with uh, simple behavioral strategies where uh, people uh, learn to avoid or not doing the kind of odd behaviors that they have. Uh, but none of these patients can actually manage without some kind of uh, medication also. And the most uh, frequently used medication, there's some self-medication definitely in most of them, which is alcohol, uh, which certainly helps them quite a lot. Uh, so from that point of view, it's a good thing. The bad thing is that uh, it's difficult to control and it has some... Uh, uh, unfortunate uh, side effects also uh, uh, in relation to uh, uh, their social activities. So therefore, uh, some drugs have been introduced which work basically like alcohol, but it's a kind of a alcohol in a tablet. Uh, both alcohol and the different uh, uh, drugs that you can use here, mainly the benzodiazepines uh, are the ones which are being used. The benzodiazepines, that's for instance uh, Valium, uh, Diazepam, uh, Stesolid, etc. Uh, so it's all drugs which will uh, dampen the anxiety and make you calm and easygoing. Uh, they all work on the GABA receptors. Uh, GABA is uh, the main inhibitory neurotransmitter in the central nervous system. So if you activate the GABA receptors, you will hyperpolarize the neurons and thereby uh, dampen the activity throughout the nervous system. So it's a lot of side effects. It doesn't work specifically on anxiety. It doesn't work specifically on the amygdala or on any of the uh, nuclei processing uh, emotions in, in, in the brain, it works in general, which also means that uh, one of the main side effects is that you get drowsy, sleepy, and uh, basically lose initiative and uh, so on. Uh, it's also a muscle relaxant, so uh, you will also experience problems uh, activating your muscle to the same extent when you take this kind of uh, drug. But they are some of the most uh, frequently prescribed uh, drugs uh, going down a little bit, which is a good thing, but uh, nevertheless, uh, they are being used to almost the same extent as uh, medication for headache, etc. Uh, it should also be mentioned that uh, sleeping drugs work on the exact uh, same uh, receptors, so it's just a little bit higher dose and uh, benzodiazepines which uh, work even more efficiently than uh, stesolu and valium. Uh, so mood disorders is sort of a continuation of uh, anxiety and uh, the most prevalent, uh, the most frequent uh, mood disorder is depression. Uh, so the lifetime prevalence, or you could say your risk of developing a depression is about 17%, which means that uh, roughly every fifth of us will develop uh, depression during our lifetime. So it, if you count how many people are here, it's just two, probably two of you are going to develop a depression at some point, unfortunately. At any given point in time, and I've written that in Danish, 7% uh, of the population is suffering from a depression. Uh, so it should be mentioned here that a depression is not just being in a bad mood and sort of being put down a little bit because you didn't pass your examination or whatever. Uh, it's much more than that. Uh, it's different uh, symptoms which together uh, makes it clear that you're really suffering from a 
uh, severe uh, depression. Uh, so it's tired all the time, restless, irritable, loss of interest or pleasure in things you once enjoyed, trouble sleeping, changes in appetite or weight, thoughts of death or suicide, hopelessness or pessimism, difficulty concentration, empty mood, feelings of being slowed down, etc. Uh, there are a lot of characteristics which makes it very clear when you have a clinical uh, depression. For instance, uh, the daily uh, uh, changes in mood, it's quite characteristic, but it's not seen all the time, but in almost all cases that people wake up relatively early in the morning, four or five o'clock in the morning, feeling really, really low down and having huge difficulties getting out of bed, many of them lying in bed until late in the day and not feeling able to get out of bed at all because it's all hopeless. Then towards the end of the afternoon, things begin to lighten up and often during the evening, they have difficulty understanding what was wrong with them in the morning uh, because there's nothing wrong. And they go to bed and they fall asleep and then next morning, four o'clock, it's bad again. Uh, so that's kind of a, a circular uh, thing which is very, very characteristic of uh, depression. Um, certainly, it's also uh, a lot of other things which makes it clear that this is just not uh, an ordinary thing because very often it's ideas which have really no relation to reality. So the way that people think when they have this kind of depression is just strange uh, because it's small things which they make 10,000 times bigger. Uh, so small problems which they would normally be able to cope with with no problem is all of a sudden really, really uh, a huge problem. There's a kind of paranoia very often involved in it, which makes them believe that everything they do is wrong. And even small things, just a remark from a friend or a teacher or whatever, will make them feel that they have really made a huge error, which is absolutely wrong. Even though that small remark maybe didn't mean anything, and even though maybe some months ago, that kind of remark would have meant not, nothing to them. So it's really uh, uh, a tremendous change in mood that uh, they experience. Part of depression is, uh, or part of uh, the times that some people experience depression, it's part of a bipolar disorder where they have periods of time where they go into a manic phase and other periods where they go into a depressive uh, uh, phase. Uh, it's probably unrelated to a unilateral or a depression where you only experience depressions. So it seems to be a specific disorder, the manic depressive dis disorder, but they certainly experience depressions which are as bad as uh, the depression which is uh, experienced by most other people. But what is uh, characteristic here is that they have these fluctuations where they uh, sometimes or for months are very depressed and then they turn slowly into a manic uh, phase where everything is uh, just the reverse. Uh, and here it's very common also to see that uh, actually what creates the most problems in these people is actually uh, the uh, manic part of the disorder. Uh, very often uh, the depression is not really as bad as what you see in the unilateral uh, depression. So they certainly have uh, thoughts of uh, uh, suicide, but they very seldom commit suicide, which is quite frequently the case when you have a unilateral uh, depression. Uh, what is the problem here when they have the manic disorder is that they uh, 
don't really have any social control, which means that their social behavior is very often outrageous. Uh, they very often spend quite a lot of money having no regards to how much money they actually have. Uh, so there are cases where uh, successful businessmen have uh, lost everything within a period of six months when they go into a manic phase because they believe that they can do everything and that they are almost godlike during this uh, period of time. Uh, so what is characteristic is that they at least believe that they can do quite a lot of things. They are overactive, they work like hell, but very often they don't accomplish very much because it's highly inefficient what they're actually doing, uh, but they don't realize it. Uh, so it becomes also for a family uh, quite hard to have a person like this uh, who is uh, constantly having plans and wanting to do things which are just plain unrealistic and uh, therefore destroying things.